Hi, welcome to Dawn Digs In. I'm Dawn. I like to talk about living a happy, healthier life and things I'm doing in my life that I think you might find some interest in or get some value from. And today we are doing a results video. This is the results of a 40-day challenge that just finished. The challenge started on the Easter long weekend and ended on Friday, which was the May 2-4 weekend here in Canada. So I'm going to go through a little recap of what the challenge was all about what I chose to do for my challenge and what results that I had and what I'm going to be doing next. So the challenge was for 40 days. There was five rules that we needed to follow in the challenge. The first one was we needed to do two workouts a day, break them up however you want to do. You could do a longer one in the morning, a shorter one in the evening or vice versa. We needed to do eight to 10,000 steps a day. We needed to drink 100 ounces of water or half of your body weight in water every day. You needed to find a eating plan that would work for you, something that would be sustainable for you for 40 days or try something new, whatever you chose to do. And the last thing was you need to give up something in your eating something for the 40 days. Now, as with every challenge, I like to start off with a few things. First, I like to do a picture, our way and our measure, and then I like to put them away. So we had talked about this before. Get your weight, write it down, get your measurements. I did the string, okay? If you don't wanna see a number on the tape measure, you don't need to, do the string, bust waist hips, put them away where you know where they are, put them away for the 40 days. I also like to do a few flexibility and strength exercises because I think it's really important to see that you're getting some benefit from what you're doing. I like to see how I get up off the floor. How many appendages do I have to put down to get up? Or can I get up without using any appendages? I like to do a plank. How long can I hold a plank? One minute, two minutes, three minutes. How long can I hold it at the start? A wall sit. How long can I hold a wall sit? Can I touch my toes? Simple things like this just kind of give you a gauge of flexibility. Putting your hands behind, can you get your hands together? And can you do it both ways? This is mobility. Important things that I, I think that we need to know as we get older, can we do some of these things? And are we hindered by certain workouts we do or do some make us better? So we've done all that. That's all gone away. Now we're ready to get started on the workout. So this is what I did and how I kind of put it together. So for my workouts, I chose to do a Hamlin workout. Now I was very picky this time and I only did the deep toning workouts. There was no inch loss. There was no model workout. There was no cardio tone. There was no cardio no cardio at all. All I did was deep toning workouts for my 40 days. This was kind of what I wanted to see. How did my body react to just these deep tonings? Because I just really don't want to do cardio right now. I don't know why, but for some reason, my body just kind of, ugh. So I thought, I'm just going to do deep toning and see what effect I get from doing the deep toning. So this was my goal. I went through, and as always, right, I keep track of all my workouts. And I wrote them all down. I took them all off his free content on his YouTube page and on his Vimeo page. So there's lots of deep toning on there. The HDM4, the deep on the Vimeo is like one of the best, D-E-E-P. You need to try it for nothing else, if for the direction. The direction he gives in these deep toning workouts is amazing. You don't get it as much in the inch loss and in the model workouts, but in the deep toning, he's really concentrating on helping you Find that move and find that angle and get where you need to be and lifting with the right muscle and lowering with the right muscle. And there's a lot of really good information. And I learned so much by doing these workouts. I'm going to be putting that into play in my future workouts. So I'm very thankful that I learned so much from doing these workouts. So that was how I started my morning was I started with my 32 ounces of water and my deep toning workouts. Now I struggled getting my steps in like super struggled where before I would do depending anywhere from three to 5,000 steps in my workout in the morning. Well, I was getting like 400. It wasn't registering at all as any steps. So I had to struggle to get those steps in later on in the day. So if I didn't get them when I did my workout at night, I started doing Yanni Fit. Now I've always liked reps to the rhythm. I've liked walking videos or going for a walk, but I started doing Yanni Fit simple. She has a counter and she's a step counter. I put on my own music. It's 30 seconds of, you know, marching in the spot, 30 seconds of an exercise, 30 seconds marching in the spot, 30 seconds of an exercise. Simple, easy. You can pick what you want to do. So if I was short 3000 steps, 
I would just pick a 3,000 step workout or 2,500 or 5,000 or whatever you needed to do. So you really had an easy way of making up those steps that you had missed. And that was really helpful for me. The water I have no problem with. I use my Keto Cuts. It is linked down below and I just put a scoop of that in my 100 ounce container of water and I just drink that all through the day. It tastes good. It's a blue raspberry. It has amino acids. It has some ketones in it. I don't know how beneficial it is, but I really like the taste of it. So that lasts me a month and I really enjoy doing that. So I just continue that. If I wasn't putting that in, I would be using Neo or Crystal Light or something because I just don't like plain water. I do like to have a flavor in it. For my diet, I started out with a fast like I always like to do, and I went into keto for about a week. And because if you're doing a fast, you're going to get into keto anyway, so you might as well just stay there. So I stuck keto for about a week, and then we went out for dinner or something went on. Then I was very intuitive for the rest of the time, very aware of what I'm eating, very aware of what's going in, whether it's good or bad. I was aware, and I really tried to be very proactive on what was going in and what I was doing. Now, my give up for the 40 days was pizza. Wednesday night is pizza night in our house. And the reason why Wednesday night is pizza night, because it's garbage night. And my husband really likes to get the box going. So we have a great pizzeria in town that does a thin, thin crust stone oven pizza. It has pesto, it has cheese, it has sun-dried tomatoes, it has roasted garlic. It is just amazing. And I don't know how it can be bad for you in any way, but that was what I gave up for my month. If you're enjoying our content so far, hit that like and subscribe. Let me know what you're doing. And if you did this 40-day challenge, what was the workout of choice that you did? And what challenges did you find? Or if there's something that you'd like me to do or a workout that you'd like me to try, let me know. love talking to you in the community. So let's get right into results. What did I find? What were my findings after these 40 days? The weigh and measure. Pulled out my sheet. My weigh and measure. My weight, up three pounds. Could be for many reasons. Could be water, could be puffy, could be a little muscle. Not too sure. It takes a long time to build muscle. And especially when you're not using heavy weights, right? To, to build big muscle, you really need to break that down and tear that muscle fiber so that it rebuilds. What I found happened with me with the Hamlin method was tone. Okay, this was something that was really, really lacking for me. And I'm going to get back to that in a second, but let's just finish with what we found. So up three pounds. Then I did my measurements. My same ropes, nothing, no change, no change at all. Okay, it's all right, because you know what? Weight and measure is not the only thing that we look at when we see if a workout program worked for us, right? It's not all about the scale and about the inches. It's not. There's other benefits going on in our body that are really important for us to take note of. So as I was saying, what I noticed was the tone. Now, when I did Tracy Anderson, I found I had a tiny body, but everything was very straight. Straight arms, straight legs, not a lot of definition. A little soft, a little flabby, a little creepy in the skin. Like, this is just what I found happened when I did Tracy Anderson. Now that I did this Hamlin, I've been doing Hamlin since October, like on and off, but mixing it in, I have definitely noticed tone. So I am really happy with my shoulder and my arm. Like, I did not have this cut before. I did not have this before. These are things that have come from doing this 40 day challenge. And to me, that is a win. That is a huge win. Anytime that you get some tone and some definition in your body, this is a major win because this is what we want, right? We want tone, we want definition. It looks good in a sleeveless top for the summer. It looks good in a fitted top for the summer. I don't want a straight line. I want some definition in my arm and some shape and some curve and a little bit of sexiness going on there, right? So that was one of my biggest takeaways was seeing this definition take shape by doing these deep muscle workouts. Now, the abs kind of stayed the same. I didn't notice a lot of, um, I didn't notice any more pulling in. I feel that I'm pretty pulled in as much as I can kind of go without making my diet better. That's kind of where I'm at. So I didn't notice it there, but I did notice it in my legs. So my legs got thicker and I've talked about this before where I said, Tracy makes me very thin. Hamlin tends to make me a little thicker, maybe a little puffier, not too sure, but my legs definitely got thicker, but there is definition in my leg. So you know how when you feel your thigh, you lift your thigh up and you feel it, right? And when I did Tracy, it was soft. Okay, now it is like rock hard. It is rock hard and I've got some definition on my legs and I'm very happy with that. I would like them to be thinner, but I have some definition on them. So we'll work on the other part, but I really liked how the definition came into play. 
So I really feel that he has given me back that sexy arm, that sexy shoulder that I'm very happy across the back, through the chest. This is all working really well for me. So I just need to tweak a few other areas, but very happy with what the deep did for this area of my body. The arm workouts are exceptional. Like if you haven't tried any of these, really just try one to see how you like it. You know, like you're sitting in a wall squat and you've got your weights and you're doing 40 repetitions in and out while you're maintaining this wall squat. And I'm telling you, you feel it. And then when you think you're done, he's like, oh, hang on, because we're going to do 40 more. Like deep muscle tone. Amazing workout. Loved it. Like really loved it. Give them a try. And my biggest takeaway that I said was the direction. The direction I received from doing these deep toning workouts was far superior to anything that I've received doing Tracy Anderson. You do not get a lot of direction. You get one or two things and then you're on your own to try and figure out what is going on in these deep workouts. Sometimes it doesn't even have music. It's just him saying to you, lift with this muscle, lower with this muscle, move that around. You should be feeling that over here. And that is so vital to having a really good workout. It's so important that you feel these things in the right way. And he kind of got all those feels in because it's all about the feels. Where's the contraction? Where's the release? What am I supposed to be working on? Instead of just going through the motions, I really love that. Oh, there it is. And that's what I'm working on. Okay. And oh, don't lift that too high and don't get that into the back and make sure you're keeping that in your butt. These are all hints and tips that he gives you that are so valuable for any workout that you're doing. So I find that every workout we do brings us closer to understanding our own bodies. I know I've talked many times about getting a consultation and I am going to do a consultation. And this is why I log everything. I keep track of all of my workouts because when I do have this consultation, I want to be able to say to them, I did the model workout. This is what happened. I did the inch loss workout. This is what happened. I did a, you know, a month of toning only. This is what happened. I want him to have all the information he can possibly have to give me the best eight week rotation he can. And it's really important that you can give that information to your personal trainer so that they know what they're working in, what injuries you have, what inflammation you get, where something bothers you. I did find that I did have some inflammation in this right hip. Now, I also had this when I did dance cardio. So it's kind of funny that it bothered me in dance cardio and then it bothered me again in a deep toning. So it didn't start to like last week, but I am giving it a couple days to rest and just kind of see like, not sure what's going on there, but obviously something isn't too happy with what I was doing. But back to writing down your workouts. I just want to go through this with you like real quick. Like if you don't keep a workout journal, you should start doing one. Just write down what you're doing, what workout you did, what you thought of it. Was it hard? Were you challenged by it? Did you like the music? Did you like the moves? Were there too many repetitions? Were there not enough repetitions? How did your body feel after it? Keep track of them all. I've done this for years on many, many different workouts that I've done. And it's a really good way of looking at how your body reacts to different things. Because sometimes we do so many things we forget or we really aren't sure. Then we go back and we go, hey, that worked really well for me. So I'm going to go back and try that again. But it's a good way of logging your workouts and knowing what works for you and your body. So these were my findings. Up three pounds, no inches, definition, definitely uh, feel good, feel strong. I was able to do a couple more push-ups. I was able to do a three minute plank. I was able to do a three minute wall sit. So those are things that, you know, are really a good show of where my strength was and what increased during this workout. So I was very happy with that. So where am I going next? I am doing one more Hamlin. I know, one more Hamlin challenge. This one is going to be his Thymatics Challenge. Now, if you want to follow me along on this challenge, it's going to start Tuesday. If you go on the Hamlin community page, which is linked down below, you can go in the featured section and there is a list of all of his workouts. You will have the model workout, the inch loss, and it tells you what each workout contains, what each series is, should you choose to purchase them, and how often he wants you to do them. So if you go down to the thigh section, in the thymatics workout, he has a thymatics detox. Now this is supposed to pull you in, get you nice and small and tight in the thigh, and you do this workout for 18 days. So it's six days on, one day off, six days on, one day off, six days on, one day off. You do the thymatics one. Now you can rotate one and two. So it's one day is, day, is 
Thymatics one, the next day is thymatics two. And you keep doing that for the 18 workout. So I'm going to do this to see if we can finally get to that area because the thighs are my area. When I did Tracy, my thighs got really nice and thin. And since I've done Hamlin, I'm finding my thighs have gotten thicker again. So I want to give it one more shot to see if I can get those inches down in that thigh. So I'm going to measure it in three spots. And then we'll come back in 18 days and we'll remeasure it again and see how this workout is done. So if you want to follow along with me and let's do it together. It's 18 workouts, right? What's 18 workouts? And if it works for us, great. I'm not going to be doing any cardio again during that workout. If you choose to, that's fine. You can add other workouts into it. It's just, I'm just going to do that workout to see what happens with that one. Then when I'm done that one, it never ends. I think I am going to go back and do another round of meta. I'm enjoying what Hamlin has kind of created. So this is a meshing of these two workouts. I love Tracy. I love the uh, the movement. I like the mind-body connection that I talk about all the time. I like the way I feel. I like how I feel strong. I like that I'm able to do these crazy moves. I like that. Hamlin I find very straightforward and basic, which is fine. But I like doing the other workouts. It makes me feel good. So I really want to go back and see if I can combine this definition that I've got from Hamlin with the tininess that I get from Tracy. And somewhere these two need to lock together because together I think they would be the perfect workout. You know, I'm doing the meta, so it's only 30 minutes. So I think I'm going to go back and do the 90 days of Meta Omni unless you have another idea because I'm really open to hearing all of your ideas. So until I see you next time, I hope you have some amazing workouts this week. You are awesome. High five.